sample is basically my sample and procedure, my populate, I'm sorry, my sample and population. My population is um, of interest was all the patients that were undergoing coronary artery bypass um, at a surgery at a specific hospital from November 1st, 2017 to February 15, 2018. A total of 68 patients were involved in the study. Uh, my sample is of the study was a total of 47 patients who met the criteria and completed the protocol using prophylactic um, amiodarone therapy. Um, my variable were the patient's age, sex, race, any underlying comorbidities, and a baseline, which is a little more in depth. Um, my dependent variables are the incidence of post-operative atrial fibrillation, which is basically anything after the surgery that can cause arrhythmias, which is really dangerous for the patients. Um, any inpatient mor mortality or any 30-day readmission. My hypothesis um, is the use of prophylactic amiodarone and protocol will not reduce the incidence of post-operative atrial fibrillation in patients undergoing coronary bypass surgery. And the alternative hypothesis is the use of prophylactic amiodarone, which is you're using it to prevent the incidence of the arrhythmias in patients that go under open heart surgery, basically. Um, my bias in research is that there is a possibility of selection and bias present of the study as participants were chosen to meet the inclusion criteria and would be assigned to receive the amiodarone, which is the medication based on reviewing the medical history. Um, the levels of measurement that were used in the study is uh, nominal, which is age, gender, race, and any underlying comorbidities, and a ratio, which is blood pressure, heart rate, weight, and ejection fraction. Um, the sampling procedure, it's uh, basically the study was implemented in a 632 bed level two tertiary uh, care center in Michigan, which is not very big. So the study was kind of small. Um, it was basically a multicultural diverse patient population. So you had a little bit of everyone. Um, the patients who underwent both emergent and non-emergent open heart surgery um, were considered for the medication um, prophylaxis. So you're going to get the medication just to prevent any arrhythmias. Um, a nurse practitioner determined whether the patients met in conclusion criteria by doing a thorough review of their medical history, including diagnostic studies and medications. Um, all right, so the data analysis. Um, it was collected from November 1st, 2017 to February 15, 2018. The baseline data was obtained from the electronic medical records um, before surgical procedure to determine the patient's risk factors, um, just in case like they don't get the arrhythmia, um, and whether the patient was a candidate to receive the, the medication. Um, patients who did not meet the criteria were started on the protocol um, but they were excluded from the post-implementation analysis. Uh, patients who were not able to complete the protocol because of adverse effects were also um, excluded. The incidence of post-operative atrial fibrillation and frequency distribution of demographic information were calculated using descriptive statistics and documented appropriately as shown on the table below. So these are just some numbers of the implementation of the medication to avoid any arrhythmias that I found in the research. All right, so the findings. A total of 68 um, basically open heart surgeries were performed on November 1st, 2017 to February 15, 2018. The 17 patients were excluded from the protocol because of history of atrial fibrillation, which are arrhythmias. Any thyroid dysfunction, any elevated LFTs or bradycardia. Four patients had the protocol discontinued within the first 48 hours because of adverse effects, which in other words, medication was giving them bad side effects. Um, okay. This is just some other research. Um, basically the protection of human rights 
is the importance for anyone involved in the research to have a clear understanding of the rules and regulations that need to be followed in order to protect the individuals in the research. So everything was basically used to carefully review um, the beginning of this activity in order to assure any necessary precautions to protect the rights of the patients and everyone involved in the study. Um, for the implementation of the review study, permission was requested and granted by the institutional review. Uh, the study took place in maintaining strict adherence to human rights protection, the ethical standards of practice of codes and contact, conduct in order to protect patients' identities. Okay, so my prospective budget. Um, we had a couple of expenses and costs. We had a nurse practitioner, which we would um, go ahead and see like on a monthly salary. So it would be about 13000 for two and a half months, which was the total of the actual research and your total expenses. So we calculated the nurse practitioner, the computer equipment, the telemetry, cardiac telemetry for seven days per patient, the 12 leads, um, labs and blood tests necessary for the test, an echocardiogram and your own IV and the drip and the tablets, which are the medications that are going to be administered to prevent any arrhythmias and miscellaneous expenses. So it all came out to $170,000, which relatively was understandable for a research, which they can get really expensive. And my references were named, uh, were right under. Um, it was actually a nurse practitioner who created this research, and the style used for the references was APA. And that's it.